no one is going to do things like you do them. You know, someone could try to copy you, but there's no way that they'll be able to du- duplicate what you're doing because you put your own unique twist. You have your own imagination, your own eye for things. You're ambitious. You're gorgeous. You're slaying. There's one problem, though. It can be a lonely road while building your empire. Guess what? You're not alone. It's the Biz Mom Real Deal podcast with Stacey Walker and Maria Gonzalez. We're two moms in love with our businesses, our families, and making a difference in the world, just like you. Every week, we're having candid conversations about our real lives. The good, the bad, the ugly, the real deal. So what's been going on with you? What's What's been going on? Oh, gosh, let's see. Um, well, okay, so great is great news is um, I have three consultations this week for interiors. I have three consultations. One that I did, um, you said it was Tuesday, Monday. I already feel like it should be Friday. My goodness. Mm-hmm. Same here. Um, yeah, so Monday I had a consultation, and it's um, – so turn that in. I'm – Totally signing all three people up. I have another one on Thursday and another one on Friday. And they're all seem to be bathrooms. So I think this potty training thing seems to be appropriate. <laughs> <laughs> that go figure. Kind of, that is hilarious. Kind of the theme of the week. <laughs> bathrooms <laughs> and stuff like that. So I'm excited to say um, that I have those three prospects. They're small projects. You know how we talked about a little bit um, a couple of weeks ago about scaling down in that aspect. Mm-hmm. So, and um, just to kind of follow up on that, just to show, you know, you got to take action after you say something, especially when it comes to, you know, anything that has to do with your goals is I have actually, and this hot, this hurt <laughs> in the past couple of weeks, but, it, but it fe- I feel good about the choice is turning down some of the bigger projects. So I've had two full home people come to me Mm -hmm. um, and I turned them down because it's just too much. And even though they were lovely people and seemed like lovely projects, I learned how to say no. So if there's a soundbite for applaud, Yay! (laughs) Because that hurts because I'm like, of course your mind goes to, but fuck the money. <laughs> yes. It always is going to go there. Yeah. And so I was like, but yes. no, 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 Maria, <laughs> come on now. Remember why you're doing this and remember, you know, cause, cause my other two things are, it's, it's not, I think this is what I kind of learned is, is why it's kind of hard is that they're not tangible things quite yet. Like I can't, like I don't have a physical product yet that I can say, Oh, but that's going to make me money because I, it's already been making me money or, um, an idea yet that I can put my, my, um, my, uh, hand on and say, Oh, but I have this and it's making me money. So it's going to be okay. Like they're still in that, in that you know, beta development phase. Um, so I know, I know in my heart of hearts that, you know, in fall, when, when I do launch, everything's going to feel more natural and, and better, but in this fuzzy phase, that's how it feels. But I'm glad I did that because then these three bathroom projects came in. So they're still small enough that I can handle within half a week and still, um, make the money that I need to, you know, pay the bills and all that good stuff. So I'm not, I don't put any energy into stressing out about that. So I did up my prices a little bit. I, you know, had a good heart to heart with myself and and my, and my bills and, uh, (laughs) and all the the whole money (laughs) mindset. We, we all sat together and just, I was like, all right, guys. We got to make this work. <laughs> How is this going to work? And the reason, and the, and the, the way was to up my prices, mm-hmm. up my rates. Um, and lo and behold, I thought that was going to be the end of the world. And guess what? It wasn't. It wasn't, right? <laughs> crazy how that works low and be fucking hold it wasn't the end of the world and 
I, and I kick myself because I know this and, um, I know that it's not going to be the end of the world, but, but it's hard to do because I guess as a service based people were such people pleasers. Mm -hmm. But then again, I was like, okay, so then I'm, I'm kind of like, um, you know, I'm, I'm kind of being backwards in my thought there because I'm not putting worth behind my work. I'm not putting worth behind my time. Mm -hmm. And I'm just, you know, if I keep lowering my prices or, or doing anything like that, like then I'm acting out of disparity. Like, no, 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 no. (laughs) Right. That's not what it's about. So, um, I'm really happy. I'm really happy about that. So they're, oh, they're going to be quick and good projects. Mm-hmm. Um, you know, still going to be my bread and butter again, because it's also a passion of mine. Um, and I'll make sure to have at least one or two online um, e-designs and, and keep forward with that and just see how that feels, see how mm-hmm. that feels. So it's all about like, you know, trial and error, right? Yes. Yes. So let me ask you a question. So the three, the three um, sessions that you you have, did these come after you raised your prices? Yes. How? Okay. Because I want to talk about this because I know it's common (laughs) for, for all of us to be wary of raising our prices because we think that either a, no one's going to buy our stuff. Uh-huh. Or be, um, or nobody's going to buy our stuff. <laughs> yeah. Um, yeah. So let's talk about this because it, it's, it's a money block, right? It's a money block that sure. all of us will go through at some point in time. And I, I, and how long probably have- not just once, probably over and over again. And I think the reason behind that is um and I kind of go through this over and over again I don't mm-hmm. know, maybe you do too with your clients but so right as of right now I have three coaching clients that I have um two whom of which are in they've already established their businesses and um and what I mean when I mean by established is like they've left their nine to five and they're working on their business mm-hmm. um and so they're they're collecting their own clientele, and I have another one who is still in her nine to five, but is um, working towards you know making that leap into having her own business. And so I've seen with the three of these people, as well as with myself, mm-hmm. is the different phases that you go through when you try to decide like how much to charge people. Mm -hmm. Um, and, and it all comes down, like, maybe I should start with like, like, okay. So when you first start, it's kind of like, well, what, what do I even start with? Mm -hmm. You know, I remember when I very, like the very first, you know, time that I like was putting my website together and, um, putting in my products and my services onto my website and how do I even charge any of this? And, you know, I'm, I'm a very resourceful person. Like Mm -hmm. I'll research and, you know, see what people around my area are doing and stuff like that. And just to kind of compare and contrast. Mm -hmm. And so just to kind of give a good idea of like maybe where I would fall. Plus, you know, you have to keep in mind, okay, well I need to at least make this much because I need to put leave, you know, have a roof over my head. So there are those things that you have to keep in mind, but there's those outside things that are very easy to measure and you're like, yeah, okay, I need to make that much. But then there are those inside things that it's, it's more emotional and, and that's what hurts us is for instance, when I first started, I was seeing that a lot of people within my same area, within my same type of, um, expertise, let's say with interior design, they were charging, you know, anywhere from like 60 to $120 an hour. And I thought to myself, $120 an hour, holy crap, like that's more than I could have ever dreamed of. Like I was Mm -hmm. coming from nine to five. I think I was making, like I was salary based, but, um, 
I was probably making maybe $30 an hour. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. And so um, that to me was just like incredible. Even 65, like that was double the amount. Right, right. (laughs) So I was like, that's even more, like that's just all so phenomenal. But you, you, you start to put that emotion in and start thinking things. (laughs) You start thinking, well, but what if I'm not as good enough as these people? Yes. Or what if, um, you know, I'm new. What if they don't think I'm an expert? Um, or what if I can't like all these, what ifs, all these, what ifs start, you know, um, flooding and you just, you, you lack that confidence. Mm -hmm. Um, so I know that I've had to work a lot with my clients as far as like that confidence building, which helps me in turn too. Um, I know as coaches, like um, the way that I kind of look at it is we're helping the people that are half a step behind us mm-hmm. <laughs> because, you know, you never stop learning and you never stop growing, even if you are a coach right? Um, mentor. Like if, if you think you have it all figured out, I mean... I mean, even, I, I think even Oprah has a coach. <laughs> right? Yes. You know? Uh, yes. Because <laughs> we can't stop growing. I mean, there's always no, going to be No, the moment something. that you think, yeah, the moment that you think you have it all figured out, like, you're doomed. It's <laughs> just very sad. Um, because, no, there's always so much to learn from anyone. I learn from my clients a lot. Mm-hmm. You know, anytime that they have breakthroughs and whatever, like, I, I learn from them as well. <clears throat> and so... Um, so yeah, so there's that aspect of like, so how do I even start to charge? Like, where do I even begin? Is there a baseline? Um, I always wished that there was kind of like a formula. I don't know. I'm a very like, yeah, I'm a, well, I'm a very like, you know me, I'm a, I'm a very by the book. Like, yes, you are. Okay. Tell me what A is and then tell me what B is and then tell me what C is. Yes. So when no one can tell me what A is and I have to figure it out for myself, I will, but you know, I, you know, I always wish there was like that, con- but there isn't. There, there isn't. And the thing is what we can end up doing is like seeing what other people are charging, but I don't even think that's a good strategy either because whatever you charge has to do ultimately with your self-worth, how confident you are um, in how good you are at what you do, whatever that is. Um, And also like if it feels right. Right. You know, um, and and this can be difficult, especially if you are comparing yourself because you brought up that these questions kept coming up, which is basically that self-talk that is just, negative like am I good enough am I as good as these people um why would someone pay me this much to do this and that and you nailed it when you said it has to do with your confidence and it also has to do with like the belief so that's why it's so important to like really work on your mindset and personal development while you're building your business because if you don't um you'll stay stuck like, well, it's a me- it's a major mind shift there, mm-hmm. um, Stacy. Because just think about it. Like <clears throat> the majority of us who who you know start making a business of our own for some reason or another, and I see this immensely common, and I think you do too, mm-hmm. is stepping away from like you you start with that traditional life. Because why? Because that's what our parents instill on us. So graduate, you go to call, or mm-hmm. you go to college, you you know graduate from there. Maybe you go higher up. Um, you get married. Like it's boom, 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 boom. <clears throat> you have this night neat, night neat blueprint that you follow, and you know it worked out for your parents. It worked out for your grandparents. Why the hell won't it? you right in this day of age this day and age like there's so much more and with our you know within the possibilities that we can have the opportunities that we can have like it's just so vast and so I think people are really tapping in to hey like it doesn't have to be that way right so when they come out of um their nine to five jobs um or that or that, you know, 
normalcy of the world, they think, okay, well, I started at my job at a so-and-so salary. So they try to like, and I'm saying it because that's been my experience. Um, They try to like convert that idea into, okay, so is that the same concept into being an entrepreneur, like I had to start at 30,000 a year. Mm -hmm. So do I start really, really low as a coach? Like, how do you measure any of that? That for me has been a question mark. Yeah, well, yeah, it's a question. Like it is, but I I don't think there is a baseline because you can make as much as you want to make. You can make as much as you want to make. Yes, you can. That's true. And I really do believe like, okay, that's why like whenever I start with my clients, like I do that business uh, or finances exercise mm-hmm. because we need, you need to know where you are. Mm-hmm. You need to know, you need to make sure if they, you can put a roof over your head. You need to make sure you can feed yourself, you know, all those essentials. Like you need to, you need to do all of that. All of those, your car, do you need a car? You need to make sure that you can maintain that internet access, of course, is vital. Yes. Oh, yeah. <laughs> if you're having an online business, and, you know. <laughs> you're screwed. <laughs> <laughs> so that's pretty vital. Um, you know, health insurance, whatnot. Um, so you cover all of that, but then, but then you want more than that, right? You're not just, because if you're just having, you know, enough money to pay for all of that, it's just kind of like, well, why did you leave your nine to five to to begin with? So Mm -hmm. it's that other part, that other, right, what I call the left hand and the right hand. So the left hand is all of your expenses, like living expenses that you can be comfortable and you're not on the street kind of thing. Um, and your right hand expenses are the, your desires, your, your wants. Like I want to be able to, I don't know, have a spa day once a month or I want, you know, those luxuries that are important to you that makes that up levels your life to that entrepreneurial CEO life. But, but what's, what to me is that for me sets like a bottom line number, right? So that's, so that's how I try to explain it to people as to like, well, how much is it to you? So if grabbing a coaching person or someone to coach, if you need to make, if you need to make at least $4,000 a month, Mm -hmm. at least, um, then you start doing the math there, but to up level ourselves, that's, that's the part where I even I even have a difficulty saying um, how much more do I up level so I can live this fab life that I know I love and deserve. Does that make any sense? Yeah, it makes total sense. And the thing is, is that you, we are going to be raising our prices um, along with the skill sets that we have, because I mean, I know I don't want to like, charge someone 10 grand a coach with me right now because I don't I'm at a point where I wouldn't be able to give them ten thousand dollars worth of like coaching yet you know um because mm-hmm. I just feel that I'm not at that level so I'm not like I said it has to really be with like where you are as far as your skill sets uh how much in demand you are and it, there's so many different elements that come into you uh charging an amount Right. Because you don't want to charge too low because there's that low level of commitment, especially when you are hella good at what you do. You know, if you're good at what you do and you're charging too low, I mean, there's that perception thing. People definitely are like, well, you get what you pay for type of thing, you know, so you, you want to have the right client. You want to have your dream client or customers and, and the thing is, is that there just, there is no easy answer. But the thing that you have to do is just like consistently like raise your prices, test them out, you know, see what works. Like because there is no right answer, you know what I mean? Because there's no way I would be able to um, tell uh, any of my clients like how much to charge because for their products or their services because that ultimately has to do with them and how much how much effort they're going to put into it. Because if I tell them, well, you know, charge, you know, $5,000, you know, a month for one client, 
and they do that and that client comes to them <laughs> and they don't do it, then I'm going to get blamed. So it has to be. Oh, gosh. Yeah. <laughs> yeah you know what I mean? So I won't even say it. To, I, I've never tell anyone how much they should price their products or their services. I say that is something that you're going to have to do some inner work on. Yeah. Um, because, you know, yeah, it would be nice to make that amount, but at the same time, you do not want to charge an amount to where you can't deliver on what you promised. Right. And I think that, um, going back to what you said about like not comparing yourself, mm-hmm. and then, oops, um, which is true. Um, but it is, but I do think that especially if you're starting out, it's a good base point yeah, to kind yeah. of see because you're not going to like, when you start, like, like you said, like you can charge whatever you want, like you're the boss, but, um, are you going to deliver on a $10,000 package? Or are you going to deliver on a $2,000 package? Right. And, and the thing about, uh, about it too is it, it truly is just trial and error. And mm-hmm. I mean, I've, I've been doing, I've been an interior designer for, you know, 10 years. So I've been in the business for 10 years. I've been working for myself for almost three years now. So I've, I mean, I've, I've pretty seasoned in that way, but even still, I still have to learn like every once in a while, like, okay, how, what, what is it that um, will attract people more? And, and I do keep, I don't want to say like I keep tabs on other like companies or whatever, but I also see what they're doing um, just to make sure that, you know, I'm keeping up with, you know, the industry always do that. Always, you know, I'm a huge advocate on, you know, continue learning, continue growing um, um, personally and, you know, educating yourself because that way, like not only will you learn from these people's successes and their failures but maybe you can make some kind of um connection there and it it'll answer it'll answer the answer the questions for you more than you think yeah absolutely i mean yeah you should definitely see what other quote-unquote competitors are charging because not only charging but doing and because when you're looking at that you can definitely see where you can uh plug um, I guess fill in any gaps that you see. Like you might see someone mm-hmm. that's awesome at what they do, but you're like, but I would do that differently. And I would yeah. do this instead of that. And that's your own unique twist in it because of course there's thousands of business strategists, right? And there's thousands yeah. of interior designers, but there's only one of you. And no one is gonna do things like you do them. You know, someone could try to copy you. But there's no way that they'll be able to du- duplicate what you're doing because you put your own unique twist. You have your own imagination, your own eye for things. So you can definitely look at what um, that other person's doing in their business, fill in those gaps, see how you can go do things differently and get, and get the same amount of income or even more. Now, of course, it has to do with your confidence level and everything, like where you're at. Like, like we just shared, like it, it's going to be a trial and error. And then you're also going to be going through these uh, evolution, like with how you think and when it comes to your self-worth, your beliefs, um, all of that. Because mm-hmm. self-worth goes definitely in line with how much you're going to make, um, how much income you're going to bring in. Yeah. And, and also don't, don't underestimate the, your, your clientele, like with so much, um, out there, so much information, like they're, they're a whole lot smarter and savvier. (laughs) And so, um, as long, but as long as you're just authentic with, with what you're delivering, Mm -hmm. I think that makes, a world of difference and like just going back to your question of so did you think that you had like a you know the spurt of clients because you upped your prices I do because um I do because even when because okay so the way that I get these clients is I get 
proposals sent to me through <clears throat> through a third party and I get all these leads and they see my profile and they ask me for quotes. They're interested in work in potentially working with me and ask me if I can send any kind of quote or information. So I did start seeing that, you know, once I started putting that higher price on there, um, I also felt like I was writing my quote, which is like a paragraph, paragraph and a half, maybe just depending mm-hmm. on whatever the project is. It felt more authentic to me. I was reading them over the other day, actually, and it just sounded better. It sounded more like me and it, it didn't sound, it didn't sound forceful. <laughs> Yes, <laughs> I was comparing it to the other ones that were, you know, lower, mm-hmm. and it just it 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 sounded very like something. I don't know, like I don't want to say like it didn't sound bad. Like I'm not going to say that, but it did sound a little bit like cookie cutter. Yeah, yeah, I get what you mean. They it was boring, boring, and just kind of blah. It was boring. And so, but I felt like this one that it was a little bit higher. I don't know. Maybe I was just having more fun with it. Maybe it's that mentality. Yeah. I had like, hey, I have the potential of making 120 an hour. Here we go. Da, da, da. If I get this, awesome. If I don't, I'll get the next one. Here we go. So that's <laughs> awesome. Just, you weren't really yeah. like connect. I mean, you weren't like. You weren't emotionally attached to it as far as money. And I love that you mentioned that you're having fun with it, right? Yeah. But yeah. It's absolutely. like you let it go. You let it go. Totally let it go. And when <laughs> you and it's like totally. when you let things go, that's when things actually work out. Yes. It and um it's it's completely that energy that just kind of flows um flows through you and then therefore it translates into anything that you're working on. If it's, you know, if it's a blog, if it's the email, if it's whatever, a, a program, a workshop, um, it just, that authenticity, it, it completely translates into your work and therefore that monies that you're asking for, there's no reason to be shy about it. There's no reason to be shy. Um, I used to be really shy about um, asking for a fee for my consultations because I would do my free in-home consultations. And sometimes it would, you know, just because I'm there and like I'm talking and talking and, you know, I'm so passionate about the product, it, it'll turn like an hour, it'll turn into two hours sometimes. And then all of a sudden, the clients for whatever reason will disappear. They'll disappear. Maybe, you know, the project has to you know go on the back burner. And I would feel so resentful because I spent an hour to two hours at that person's place, like giving my all and, you know, um, telling them what I can do and whatnot. And, and, and so I was like, no, I, I can't do that anymore. Like if, if you, you're putting your time into something, then you need to be able to, to charge for it. Hello. I'm sorry. I've been talking this whole time. I had it on mute. (laughs) Like a dumbass. Have you been talking? Well, I started talking until you said hello. There you go. (laughs) Can you hear me now? I do. How embarrassing. That is so funny. Like I'm talking like through the mute. Um, (laughs) (laughs) <laughs> Durr. But I was going to say that um, I'm glad that you brought that up about the consultation because you just made me think of um, a client that I had and she was not, she was doing consult. She, she um, does event planning, like bridal stuff and just an event planner. And she would actually do this for free. She'd do her consult. She'd actually give the people samples and stuff like that. Yeah. Um, which costs money. Right. And, right. and they would disappear too. And she never, you know, got their email or anything. And I told her that you have to start charging for your consultations because think about all the resources that you're the cost of all the resources for doing those samples, spending time with them. And, you know, with an event, that is a very 
it's not cookie cutter. Like you really have to know exactly what that person wants, what their vision is. Um, so she had a hard time with this. And I was like, think about how much gas you're spending. And then she has to go to a certain person yeah. to get the supplies for the sample. And I was like, look, you need to weed out the people who are not going to do business with you because then all of a sudden you're chasing people <clears throat> trying to figure out what happened to them. And you've already put in work. And, and I told her that you're going to have to have a, con- a non-refundable consult fee and explain exactly what that, why. Why you're charging that fee is because you're yeah. providing samples, you're spending time, and whether they work with you or not, that money is yours. And it's not money to get rich off of, but it's enough to cover those expenses that you, you know, for your time and those samples. And people get it. Like, if you're just authentic and real enough, like right. people, I mean, imagine you, like, I, I could not imagine, like, asking someone to come into my home and say, hey, I don't know, makeup consultant or whatever. Mm-hmm. I mean, I, I do need a makeup consultant. So anybody out there? <laughs> <laughs> uh, if they came to my home and like, you know, told me, you know, hey, we can do this. This could be like your day look. This can be your night look. Da 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 da. They do their thing. They spend like an hour, an hour and a half in my home. I would expect back some kind of you know bill right i mean dang they spent their gas Something. they went over there and probably measured stuff it had a bit you know I like mean, i wouldn't it wouldn't bother me if they were like oh, okay well thanks for you know listening to me this is the service for today here's your invoice this is what we covered blah blah blah, blah. I, I would not like you know bad an eye right <laughs> Because they took their time and were, you know, lending their expert. Because you're lending your expertise to these people. Remember that, like you're mm-hmm. lending these this very, very important expertise to people, and and you're not just doing it. Like when you do in home consultations, like I had this client too who is starting to do that, and she she was like, I told her to charge for the consultations, and she was like, Maria, I don't want to. <laughs> And I said, why? Why? Yeah, why? <laughs> <laughs> and she was like, well, isn't that kind of icky? And I go, no. no. What's <laughs> icky is um, you not, you know, being able to pay your bills or what's icky is you going to do all of this work and this um, person may or may not sign on with you, but yet you've spent your energy, your time, your talent, and what you go home with nothing. Right. Like, you're you're not you're in business, correct? <laughs> <laughs> Are you a charity? <laughs> no. Like I know sometimes I get kind of they laugh at me, but I'm like, come on, I'm I'm pretty hard on my on my clients, <laughs> but it's that tough love that I yeah. wish I had in the beginning like you know kind of shaky because that's the other thing too is um we we this we as a generation like we still have that like kind of like shy demeanor when it comes to money I'm guilty of it well I it's am. because we we've been we've inherited this certain beliefs about money since we were little so A lot of these money stories that we have um, before we started like becoming aware of them and changing them, it's just that we just took those stories as truth. And money is something that's very uncomfortable for so many people to talk about, except wealthy people. Wealthy people have a healthy relationship with money. That's why they make it and they have no qualms about talking about it because it's out in the open. It's not like some elephant in the room that nobody talks about. That's what I learned. Like, well, the people, they, they talk about money and they, they make sure they keep it at the top of their mind. Um, they make sure they focus on it. It's like it, they have a healthy relationship with money. Mm-hmm. And, and that's the thing. Most of us aren't raised to have a healthy relationship with money. Either we're raised to think that money's evil or that people that have money are greedy and don't give a damn about anyone or the money story that we don't deserve wealth because of 
things that we've done in life or something like that. So there's so many weird money stories that yeah we inherit. Like I grew up, I grew up with the money story of I had to work my ass off. Mm-hmm. Same here to make anything. And I remember growing up, my parents um, always fighting about money. Money, I always, yes. I always like. My parents, um, they never gave me like a traditional allowance when I grew up, but Mm -hmm. anytime that I needed something or if I like was going out with friends, they would just, they would give me, I was never taught how to finance anything. Like everything, I'll I'll be the first to admit, like, I'm not going to say like everything was given to me on a silver platter, but I wasn't taught how to maintain money. Mm -hmm. I wasn't taught, um, you know, the importance of how to save money. I always thought oh, if I ever need something, I have to go to my mom and dad. Yeah, it's going to be a fight, but um, that's how it is. And I did have jobs when I was in high school, mm-hmm. but I was just never taught how to maintain or grow it and invest in anything or anything like that. But, um, but yeah, so my money story has always been like, you've got to work hard. Did it? Like I remember my dad always being like, uh, so I've been up since four in the morning. What time did you wake up? And I'm like 14. I'm like, well, I got up like at six <laughs> and went to school. <laughs> 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 um, <laughs> so he was, I don't know, he was kind of like a commander in that way. <laughs> right, right. <laughs> but yeah, it's, it's, um, it's something that sadly just kind of like bleeds into your life. And I've been catching myself too. Like whenever Amelie, we go to the store and she expects a toy. And, um, that day, maybe I cannot purchase that toy, but instead of telling her, instead of telling her what I used to do is like, no, like I don't have money for that. Like I can't, we don't have money for that. I'll tell her next time we'll get it next, next time we'll buy it or, you know, we can have it next time. Um, so at least it doesn't, at least for me, it shows like, I'm not saying like, no, I'm, I'm blocking this. But I am saying, like, it's something that we can have. Like, you know, it's the money is coming. <laughs> the money is coming. You mm-hmm. know, like, I can't just throw out 20 bucks for a bunny rabbit every other weekend. <laughs> right, right. <laughs> <laughs> you know, and so she's come to learn that, too, because now whenever we go to the store and she sees something that she likes, she'll be like, oh, I like this. Mommy, can we get it next time? So I'm like, yeah, and we do like if if I do have it and it's still there and she remembers, I'm like, yeah, let's let's get that now. We now, now we can have it now. We're able we can do it. So trying to to take away that negativity from money is um, it's still a work in progress for me. You know. Yeah, me too. You know, like my mom, she was she's always been good with money. My dad, not so much. Horrible with money. So I've seen both sides. And, you know, when I was younger, my mom would make sure that we didn't go to the grocery store uh, because, of course, kids are going to ask for some stuff all the time. So she she stopped taking me to the grocery store. I, I don't know how old, but she stopped doing it because and now I know why. Like I used to be mad. Oh, Stacy was always asking for something. <laughs> <laughs> Baby uh, Stacy wants something. Right. Mm. And I used to be mad about it, but now that I have children, it's like now I know why she did it because she hated yeah. saying no. She hated yeah. saying no. And I'm that way too. Like I really, you know, Jordan, he's still young, so he's still too young to really ask for stuff. But um yeah, I'm really trying to change the money story still uh, because, you know, my mom, very frugal, but, you know, we never lacked for anything. Yeah. But, you know, I, I wasn't taught really about money in my house and growing up either, you know, so I saw things, you know, I saw how my mom was with money and how my dad was with money and I ended up somewhere in between. Yeah. Um. So... I was uh, so now I'm like shoot I need to make sure I have a good money story for my for my kids yeah exactly because I mean just uh, even more so what was what what am I what did my clients say the other day that really like shook me um is what did she say oh so she was asking me about Amelie she was like how is she da 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 and I was like she's great um she was like so you know I bet she's just 
uh, you know, in that fun uh, stage in her life that she's just like soaking up everything that you're saying and doing, like, you know, that everything you say and do is like Bible to her. Mm -hmm. (laughs) So (laughs) I turn to my client, I'm like, okay, well, let's just kind of chill out a little. <laughs> like, I knew that, but like, geez, don't scare me. She was like, no, Maria, it's true. Mm-hmm. And it is. And it's <laughs> so scary. I was like, oh, God. I mean, it is. And I know that, obviously. I know that. But when someone tells it to you, you're like, oh, fuck. <laughs> right. Yeah. Yeah. Because you're like, dang, yeah, our kids watch everything that we do. They're sponges. Um, their mind is wide open. I think by the time they reach five, I think, um, they pretty much so have their beliefs down from what right. we taught them. I think five is the age from what I've read. And I've read six, but yeah, basically. Yeah. So it's like, shoot. So now I gotta undo all of what I did <laughs> those years before. So we gotta be really intentional about stuff. And because I'm still, I'm still figuring things out, you know, and I know it's like, dang it. You know, I want to make sure my kids are mentally healthy in so many different ways, but I know I cannot be perfect. I know, I know that. And I'm just going to continue to do my best because I don't want my kids ever coming back and saying, well, mom, you didn't, you never told me that. (laughs) <laughs> yeah and I think just the best way to do it and and I it just gives me a peace of mind <laughs> too is you know yeah I mean we're not perfect and even you know as we work through our many stories like we're always like I, I want lis- our listeners to know like it's whether you're beginning it's whether you're in the middle of your career it's whether you're you know towards the highest peak of your career and you're mm-hmm. making you know those those are six, seven figures a year, you're always mind shifting. You're mm-hmm. always growing. There's always, always going to be something. So what I, what I would really love if anything else is to say like, like just be so kind with yourself. Yes. <laughs> be so kind with yourself because, um, you really are kicking ass. You really are doing um, what you need to be doing. It doesn't look like much, but to the people around you and the people that are watching you, it's like, it's amazing. It's amazing. And you will, like, if you haven't already, you will have that day where you're like, yes, yes, this is, this is where I'm supposed to be. And this is what I'm supposed to be doing. And that's kind of one of the, the ways that like I'm trying to raise Amelie is I'm trying to be very authentic and real with her mm-hmm. in the way that, you know, if mommy cusses or if mommy, <laughs> you know, does something bad or whatever, like I want to, I want, I, I try to acknowledge it, especially if she calls me out. <laughs> right. Yes. <laughs> I, I'm not going to lie. Sometimes I'll try to like, you know, shove it under the carpet. <laughs> Yeah. <laughs> no, mommy didn't do that. No. <laughs> um, but but um but I think that um our kids like they're great because they really do keep us in check. And yeah. so as long as you let them do that and you let them, you know, think for themselves and you also not try to instill your thoughts on them, but just kinda like I don't know. I ask Amelie questions all the time. Like if she asks me something and wants to know about something, like I'll try to answer her, you know, to the best of my ability or I'm like, okay, I'll, or, or I'll find it out for her. But I, instead of like giving her the full answer, I try to um, ask her questions too, just to kind of get her brain going and see Mm -hmm. her perspective. And one day when we do start talking about money more, um, like right now, all I can say to her is really like, you know, not today, but we can come back and do that. Or I don't want to tell her that we can never afford anything. I don't want to ever tell right. her that, um, you know, anything negative like that. Like, I don't want her to feel any like scarcity in that way. Mm-hmm. Um, uh, but I do want her to think like she, she can have it all. It's, it's just, we have to plan for it. Absolutely. I couldn't agree more. Right? Yes. So I think this was 
an awesome episode. And we, we kind of got your deep. time, Mama Sita. I know. We kind of got deep today, didn't we? I know. This could be like a part one of like five series. I know. <laughs> money, money is big. Thanks for listening to the Biz Mom Real Deal podcast. You already know that starting and running your own business can be a lonely road. That's why you're invited to join the Elite Society of Ambitious Moms Mastermind. The striving community is not for the excuse makers, the non-action takers, or the complainers. I know that's not you. So join us today at EliteSocietyOfMoms.com.